so adding questions. Adding questions can be very easy. Um, there are many different types of questions, so I'll walk through and show you how to, to do that. So first thing we want to do is we want to prepare some slides. Here I have a whole bunch of question slides that I'll go through in this quick video real quick. So this first one is an example text question. So how could you utilize Pear Deck in e-learning? What I do is you'll see here I have this Pear Deck icon. That's because I have this running. So when you guys have this running, you'll actually get that extra Pear Deck. But if you don't have that, that's okay. Go into Add-ons, Pear Deck, right here. It says Open Pear Deck Add-on. It's going to open right over here on the right-hand side. And below here, we're just going to scroll down. It says Ask a Student a Question. So I click on the slide I want. Now this is a text, so I'm just going to click on Text. It's going to add that interactive question. And there it is. It's already done. It's that simple. So when kids go to this slide, there'll be a little box over here that allows them to type. For this one, I want to do a choice example. So I click on choice. So what other tools will be helpful for assessment during e-learning? If I click on choice, I don't have to retype in that question. All I have to do is type in my responses. Maybe quizzes, maybe Flipgrid, maybe Google Forms. And I can add another response if I'd like as well. So uh, Kahoot. And I'm going to update the slide. What this does now is this little bar down here signals the students that, hey, this is an interactive slide, so you have to do something. The choices, again, will pop up on the side, and they'll be able to choose. It's important for you to know that this is like a poll. It's not necessarily where you're marking something right or wrong. So this, uh, this can open up dialogue uh, for later purposes in your instruction. Oh, I don't know why I just got out of that. I click on Pear Deck. So this one is a number example. So the number example is pretty cool. So when I click on number, it's going to automatically put that in. And it's going to then display it on, in real time on like a, a plot chart. Okay, so I'm going to update that slide. And now they can only put in a number. But it's cool for, for teachers because they can then see on a number line where all the responses and look for outliers and such. Uh, website example. So if I want to send students to a website inside here where it's not just like a button to click on a link, I can actually do that by going to website. Here with website, I just need to copy and paste. It has to be an HTTPS. Okay, that's important. Um, this ensures that all the data is private. So I'm going to use something called CK12, which, uh, spoiler alert, I'll be doing next week um, some, some videos on this. This is a Flexbook assessment. Um, what it does is they have to get 10 right. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're only going to have 10 questions. They have to get 10 right, and they kind of get harder as they go on. So I'm going to copy and paste that in here, and there it is. I know that it's good because it gave me the preview. All right, so I'm going to update that slide. Now when they get to this slide, it's going to automatically take them to that website. Okay, So that's like embedded in the slide deck. Slide six through eight, I have some drawing examples. Okay, this first one is something that I did. I took this from Ready Math, a quick screenshot, and all I have to do is go down here to draw, and it puts it in. So now students could actually solve this problem with drawing, so they could use their touch screens uh, to write on it, or they could open up text boxes and then they could just type in there. So either one's fine. Um, they can highlight, they can circle, they can go through all of that as well. Below I have some examples of things that are already created for you using the template guide and I'll show you that in a later video. So here's another one that's an example of a drawing slide. It's already here interactive. And finally we have draggable. Alright, so draggable will allow students to drag an icon. So this one's asking for which hemisphere is experiencing winter. All right, so that one, we would be able to drag this icon, students would, and to a certain spot. This one would be locating different continents. And compare and contrast. So when you do a draggable, I'll just click on this and show you the examples that you could do. What's really cool is you can add in all these different, like, kind of little icons 
you can change the color on those icons and you can add more. So you can have students actually placing multiple things on the slide at different spots. This is a great way for you to look real quick to see if your students understand uh, where a certain country is or if they um, want to understand where anything is. I, a quick, I noticed this is a mistake. This is actually a drawing slide, not a draggable. Um, as you can see here, they would be drawing on this Venn diagram. These would be draggables. Okay, so just quick mistake on my part. Those are really the five questions plus the interactive website. I know that's a lot, but there are different ways you can use that, and I'll show you in a, another content uh, template video.